How to sew the animal tote. Follow me and I'll show you how to make a really show-stopping tote bag where the beautiful illustrations flow into the handle. This is something that you can really show off. Cutting out. Take the panel out from your kit and give it a press. You can see here that all the pieces are labelled with the correct label above each of them. This panel here is for the cat bag. If you're making one of the others, they're still made in exactly the same way. I'm just showing you this one here. So cut around the outer edge of all of them. The seam allowances are included on each piece. There's also some extra bonus prints on your panel that you can use for your own makes. Once you've cut it out, you can see I've pinned the label to the top of the right side of each one. So there are the two outer pieces. Here's the front lining and the back lining. Again, you can see that I've pinned the label to the top, just to remind me during assembly. There's the pieces for the slip pocket. So there's a slip pocket outer and lining, and then a zip pocket as well. These are optional, but they make a nice addition to the inside of your bag. And then there's two pieces for the handles. And there's one of the extra bonus prints that you can use for other makes. Now you can put wadding in your bag, that's optional. And if you want to put a zip pocket in, you'll need a zip too. Making the bag outer. If you do want to add extra structure to your bag, then press the bag front out and the bag back outer onto the wadding or tack it into place if using fusible, then trim it around the raw edges. I haven't used wadding for my bag, but I know that a lot of people like to. So if you do want to, then do it at this stage. But then just follow the rest of the instructions, whether you used wadding or not. <laughs> now take the bag front outer and the bag back outer and place them right sides facing. Match them up along the bottom edge because this is the edge we're going to sew first. This bag has extra special detailed box corners. So you make it in a slightly different way to a normal bag so that you get those triangular details on the outside. We'll start off by pinning it together along the bottom edge only. Match up the right hand corner and the left hand corner so that the side and the raw edges match up and then pin it together across the bottom edge just between those side pins. Now sew together along the bottom edge. All the seam allowances are listed in your instructions booklet. Once that's done, you now need to measure on the bottom of the front outer. You need to measure and mark one and a half inches up from the seam, not the raw edge, but the seam. You can either do this with a tape measure and a pen, or if you've got a rotary cutting ruler, you can use that because you can line the one and a half inch mark up on the seam and then draw all the way along the bottom of the bag on the wrong side. So I'm just drawing from the top all the way to the bottom. I'm using an erasable pen for this. You could draw it lightly in pencil if you prefer. Now place the front outer on your ironing board and fold it so that the front outer is right sides facing each other and you fold it along that draw line. So you can see the seam that I've sewn is on the top and I'm just folding it just with my fingers to start with to get it accurate. Make sure the side edges match up when you do this and fold it along the line so the front outer is right sides facing. And then give it a press because that crease is important for assembling it in a moment. Once you've drawn and pressed the front outer, you're going to do exactly the same with the back outer. So place the back outer wrong sides up and measure and mark with a tape measure or a ruler one and a half inches up from the seam. Again, all of these measurements are in the instructions so that you, you don't need to remember this. It's all written down for you. So mark a line all the way down the wrong side. Then in exactly the same way as you did with the front outer, take the back outer, fold it so it's right sides facing with the, that line on the edge. This time I'm doing the line facing towards me so that I don't disturb the pressed crease that I've already placed in the on the front outer because I don't want to move that out of the way by pressing onto it. So just finger press it so that line is on the edge and then give it a press 
all the way along. Once you've done that, you also need to press the centre seam open. Do this carefully so that you don't disturb the creases that you've placed in the front and the back. If you rearrange it like this, press that seam open. That will just help the bag to lie flatter at the bottom. Now you're going to take these two folds together. So take the front fold and the back fold and place them together. You'll see that that centre seam is lying beneath and below them and then pin together on one side edge. So you've got four layers of fabric there. Hold the creases together again you can see that the centre seam is between them and then pin together on the other side edge. So you've got four layers of fabric which include all of the folds. So you can see how that all works now. Now pin together down the side so start pinning at the top edge and then pin all the way down the side. With this cat one, I want to make sure that that baseline matches up. With the other ones, if there's any other any prints you want to match up, just make sure they match first and then pin between them. So you can see all the folds are there. Turn it round to the other side and pin the side together in the same way. If you start off by pinning in the top corner, you've always already pinned the bottom one and then just pin between them. Just make sure as you're lying flat, that as you're pinning, that everything is lying nice and flat together. Because it's this careful measuring and folding that will give you those neat little box triangular corners on the outside that we'll see in a moment. Now sew together down one side, all the way to the bottom, making sure that those folds stay nice and flat and then sew together all the way up the other side. So you can see that's all sewn together and all, everything has stayed folding in. Now, if you turn it right sides out, you can see that at the bottom corners, we've created a box corner, but instead of having that normal cut out square box corner, the same effect with the base that you get a deeper base, but instead you get these really detailed little triangles on the bottom. They're just an extra detail. It's just a different way of making a box corner instead of cutting out a square bottom. I quite like it because it just adds this little almost origami fold on the outside. If you lay that down flat and rearrange it slightly, just make sure the triangle is flat. Give it a press. That just gives your bag a little bit more structure. And it's easier to do it at this stage before you line the bag and the whole thing's finished. So they lay that out flat. Press the side seams open at this stage as well. Now because you pressed those bottom edges for the folding, they're sort of facing inwards at the moment and you really want those bottom folds to be facing outwards. So if you take one corner, pinch one corner, another corner and lay it flat on your ironing board, then press between them and that just puts the creases on the outside and it just helps, although it's not a sewn edge, it's a pressed edge, it gives the base of your bag a little bit more structure so it's got some the depth. So just take one corner and the other corner and press them. And that's your outer finished. Making the zip pocket. Take the zip pocket front, you can remove the label from it now, and turn it over to the wrong side so the top is on the left hand edge. Now you need to measure one and a half inches down from the top edge and draw a line across your fabric. You can either measure this with a tape measure or do it with a rotary cutting ruler like I've got here. Now mark another line a quarter of an inch below that. Again, you can use a tape measure and a ruler or you can just use it using a ruler like this. Then mark and measure another line a quarter of an inch above the first line. So you've got three lines that are spaced a quarter of an inch apart. Now fold that fabric in half just to find the centre because those lines need to measure 8 inches long and be placed centrally. So if you measure 4 inches to the right 
of that centre mark. Then measure four inches to the left of the centre mark. That box is now placed centrally and is eight inches long. Also, draw a couple of diagonal lines going from the top left corner and the bottom left corner to the centre, just like this. And then on the other side, those lines are a quarter of an inch long. So the outer lines are your sewing lines and the inner line are your cutting. Now take the bag back lining and keeping it right sides up, fold it in half to find the centre and just mark that crease. This is so that your pocket's placed centrally. Now measure and mark one inch down from the top. I'm doing this in the centre and then a little bit on either side just so that I can keep my pocket straight. All these measurements are in the instructions. Now take your marked zip pocket front, find the centre of this by folding it in half and making a little crease, and place this right sides down on top, so they're right sides together. Match up the centre creases of the two fabric pieces, and also make sure that the top of the pocket is along that one inch line. Smooth it all out so it's nice and flat, and then pin it in place all the way round. Pin just outside those drawn lines. Don't pin along them, but just pin outside them. This means that you can keep the pins in place while you're sewing, which just makes it easier. And it holds everything nice and flat. So I've pinned it about an inch outside the drawn lines. Now you need to sew around the outer marked lines all the way around. Just sew around the outer ones. So you can see now that I've sewn a box, a rectangular box, all around the outer lines. Now you need to cut along the centre line. So if you just fold the two pieces of fabric in half, you can make a little snip just to get into it and then open it out and cut very carefully along that centre drawn line stopping when you get to the bottom of the diagonal marks and then snip diagonally into the corner. Take care that you don't cut the stitching, but these little diagonal lines will make the, when you turn the whole thing out, a lot neater because it helps it to lay flatter. So again, from the other end, just snip diagonally into those corners about one or two fabric threads before the stitch line, just so you don't cut into it. Now once that's done, put it on your ironing board and to make turning it out neater, fold back the top layer of the zip pocket front so it's pressed open. Just press open it with your fingers to start with because it's a little seam allowance and it's easier to finger press this to start with. Open it all out and also open out that two, those two little triangular sections at either end and then press this seam open and flat. This just helps you to get this seam laying right on the edge when you turn it all the way through in a moment. Now post the zip pocket front through to the wrong side of the bag back lining. Now you need to take a little bit of time here to make sure that everything lays flat. So place the bag back lining right sides down and then open it all out and arrange it so that the seam is laying right on the edge. If you take a bit of time and press it from the front and the back, and I find that a little spray of water or seam on those side edges helps to just pull it all into shape. It will lay nice and flat, but I find that you need to turn it over to the wrong side and the right side a few times to do this. Once you've done it, it will look like this and you've got like a little post box shaped opening in the front that's all nice and neat. Now this is where you're going to place your zip. So now my zip is longer than the gap because it's easier to sew it into place. So place the zip with the teeth right sides up and then place that post box over it, making sure that the teeth run centrally along the post box and pin the zip into place. If you don't want to use a zip, you don't have to. You can just leave this post box opening without a zip and then top stitch around the edge of it instead of putting in a zip. And you will still have a pocket, but it just won't have the zip in it. So pin the zip into place through the lining, the pocket and the zip tape. Turn it round and pin along the bottom edge. 
Again, make sure that the pins go all the way through into the zip tape and just check as you're going that the zip stays straight so that the teeth run exactly along the centre. You can use fabric glue to glue the zip into place instead of pinning it if you prefer. So now you'll see because I placed the zip centrally, the slider you can't see. So we're just going to, it's just because it's easier to pin the zip tape into place with the zip closed. It's a bit neater. So once you're happy that you've pinned it in all in, into place, before you stitch, you need to move the slider. So just turn it over, push the slider with your finger until it's a, a little bit away along the zip. I've done it about a quarter inch, you can put it a quarter to a halfway along the zip and then just pop the pins back in if you've had to move any and then your zip is nice and straight because it's easier to do while it's all closed now top stitch all the way around the edge about an eighth of inch from the edge you may need to lift the presser foot when you reach the slider so it goes neatly past it and then move the slider out of the way so there's the zip neatly inserted now trim off the ends of the zip about half an inch beyond the edge of the seam that's because you don't want the zip to go into the ends, edges of the pocket. It just reduces the bulk. So I'm trimming them up about half an inch longer. But everything is secure because you've sewn across the zip teeth. So the zip won't actually come undone. Now take the zip pocket back and place that right sides on top together with the zip pocket front and then pin it together it's very important here that you only pin the zip pockets together you don't pin into the lining because you don't want to see any of this stitching from the front so just as you're going along just lift it away from the lining and pin together this means that the only sewing that you will see is around the edge of the zip it's almost like a, a hidden pocket so do, don't sew into the lining And then pin it together along the bottom edge again. Always match up the corners before you pin across the centres. The two zip pocket pieces are the same size so the raw edges will match up exactly. Now you need to sew it in place but fold it like this under your sewing machine so that you sew across and then when you pivot and to go around the corners just move it to make sure you don't sew into the lining. Once that's done, this is what your pocket will look like. You can see I haven't sewn into the lining, just around the pocket. And if you turn it over, all you can see there is the little the zip at the front. Open up the zip and there's your pocket. If you haven't used a zip and you've just top stitched around the edge, it will just look like this, but without the zip. And your zip pocket is now complete. Making the slip pocket. Take the slip pocket front and the slip, slip pocket back and place them right sides facing, matching the raw edges and making sure the top edges of each are together. And then pin them together all the way around. So pin together across the top. And then down one side and then pin them together down the other side. Now you need to leave a turning gap so that you can turn it right sides out in the centre of the bottom edge. So if you fold the bottom edge in half, make a little crease, open it out, you'll find the centre. And then if you measure and mark one inch either side of this, this will leave a two inch gap in the centre of the bottom edge. Place vertical pins at this point so that you remember to stop and start stitching. Now stitch from one pin across the bottom, along the side, along the top, and then stop stitching at the other pin. Once you've sewn it together, it will look like this. I've just pressed the seam over, top seam over to one side and with the turning gap, I've pressed both seams over. Now clip off the corners. This just reduces bulk in the corners and makes your finished pocket a bit neater and have crisper edges. So just trim off the corners close to the seam but not actually through it. Now turn your pocket right sides out through the gap that you left in the lining. And then push out all the corners, just with your fingers to start with. And then you can use a turning tool to just push out the corners. I use the stick that comes from my turning set, just because it's 
got a nice point, but it's not really sharp. So just use something like that that won't pierce the fabric. If you push the corner onto the tool, rather than the tool into the corner, you're less likely to pierce the fabric. So once you're happy, all the corners are out, give it a nice press and then top stitch along the top edge only. This holds the lining neatly inside and also decorates it as well. Now take the bag front lining, fold it in half like this and make a crease. This is just to find the centre of the top edge. Take your finished slip pocket that you've top stitched. But first you need, need to mark three inches down from the top on the lining. So mark at the centre. Now take your pocket, fold it in half to find the centre of the top edge and crease it. Now place that crease on the crease in the centre of the lining so that the top edge is three inches from the top. You can double check to make sure that the pocket is straight by measuring to make sure that either side of it is three inches from the top as well. Once you're happy, it's set in the centre and placed at the right distance from the top. Pin the pocket into place onto the lining. So pin it down one side, then pin it across the bottom. Because you folded the edges of the turning gap to the inside, they will stay closed. And when you stitch the pocket into place in a moment, that will hold the turning gap closed at the same time. So stitch it into place down the side, across the bottom and up the other side. And then your slip pocket is complete and you can use it for small items. You can even put a press fasten on this at this stage if you want to hold it closed. Assembling the lining. The lining is assembled in exactly the same way as the outer with just a gap left in the lining. But I'll show you how I do this. It is exactly the same way, but just to repeat, place the bag front lining and the back lining right sides facing and pin together along the bottom edge. Make sure the raw edges match up by pinning it together at the corners first. And then placing some other pins in between just to hold the whole lining together. Now fold it in half, or you can measure. I find folding is just easier to find the centre. Make a little crease, and there's the centre. You need to leave a six inch gap unstitched in the lining. This is for turning the bag right sides out at the end. So if you measure three inches to the left of that centre mark, then measure three inches to the right of the centre mark, you've then got a six inch gap left. Place vertical pins so that you remember to leave it unstitched. Now stitch from the left hand edge and stop at the gap and from the right gap and then to the right hand edge. So now there you can see it's all sewn together with a gap in the lining. So you need to mark this in exactly the same way as you did the outer, either using a tape measure or a ruler like I'm doing. Measure one and a half inches up from the seam. Or you can see now I've got that wrong. I'm just going to move it over. I was measuring from the bottom. You need to measure one and a half inches up from the seam. Don't worry, all of this is in the instructions. So you can refer to that and watch the video tutorial at the same time just to double check. So I'm marking the line one and a half inches up from the seam on one side. Now, when I did the outer, I marked it and then pressed it. I'm just going to mark both of these at the same time. Once you've done the outer and you know how the process works, you can do it in whichever order you want. I just like to do both of my marking at the same time. So now measure one and a half inches on the bag back lining up from the seam. And then once you've marked it, you can then do all the folding and the pressing in the same way. So I'm taking one side, I think that's the bag back lining, and placing it so it's right sides facing and folding it along the seam. And then you would give that a press. And the seam, the centre seam needs pressing open. And then take the other side of the bag and again fold it so that that side of the bag is right sides facing, fold it along the seam and give it a press. Then it will look like this. You've got the folds 
and you've got the centre seam pressed open, that also fold presses open the turning gap as well, which you'll need later. So arrange it so that you place those two pressed folds together and pin together, that's through four layers of fabric, and then pin together along the side. You can see there's the pocket lining there, so make sure that's folded downwards. And then pin all the way along that side. And then on the other side, again, take the folds, place them together so that centre seam is beneath and between them. Pin together through all four layers. Make sure it's all lying nice and flat because then you'll get the nice triangular shape. If any of it is creased or puckered, it won't work properly. So just make sure it's all nice and flat and then pin it together along this side. But you've already done this with the outer, so you know what you're doing now. There you can see the centre seam between them. Now sew together down the right hand side and then sew together down the left hand side. Once you've done that, it will look just like this. If we turn it right sides out. You can see there's all the pockets and the little triangular box corners, exactly the same. So give them a little press as well, just to hold them nice and flat. And there's the gap in the lining as well. Making the handles. Take one bag handle, you can remove the label because you won't need it now, and fold it in half with right sides facing, matching up the raw edges. And then press it. You can either finger press this just to hold it for now, or you can press it with your iron. I prefer to press it with my iron, it just holds it all together. And then pin it together and stitch down the long edge. So I'm just going to place a few pins along. If you've pressed it already, it will hold it together. So just place a few pins just to hold those raw edges together. Then stitch together down the length. Then press that seam open and flat. It just helps it to lay on the edge. I've also tacked it together across the short edge because you need to turn it right sides out. And I find the easiest way to do this is using the turning tube. So if you put the tube inside and then take the stick that comes with it, take the blunt end and push the end that you've tacked all the way through. This is the quickest and easiest way to turn a tube or a handle right sides out. So take the tube off and then remove the stick from inside the handle. Undo the tacking stitches at that end. Now because you press the seam open, it makes it a lot easier to get that seam on the edge. So roll it between your fingers and then press it so the seam is on the edge. And then top stitch down both long edges and then your handle will look like this. Give it another press once you've done that to make it nice and flat and then repeat this to make the other handle in exactly the same way. Assembling the bag. We're now going to pin the bag handles to the front of the bag front outer. So take one of the handles, you can see with the cat one you need to place what the right handle on the right side, with the other two it doesn't matter. Measure half an inch from the top of the handle because this is how much it needs to extend above the top to make it more secure. Now place it right on top of the print. So each of the handles will have a print that matches it. So make sure it sits exactly on top of the print. For the cat one, it's the tail. And then it's sticking out half an inch above the top and then pop another pin in just to keep it straight. So make sure it's lying right exactly on top of the printed matching section. Now run the handle through your fingers to make sure that it isn't twisted and pin the other hand end of the handle on top of its matching print. Again, measure it to make sure it extends a half an inch above the top of the bag and is sitting exactly on its matching print beneath. 
pin it to the bag front at the top. And then make sure it's laying straight on top of the corresponding print and pin it into place a little way down. I've pinned it about inch, two inches. It's just enough to keep it straight. Then tack it together across the top and then a little bit further down using the longest stitch on your machine. And you can see that handle is now tacked into place. Repeat that in exactly the same way to pin and then tack the handle to the bag back outer. Now with the, out, the front outer right sides out and the lining wrong sides out, place the outer inside the lining, making sure those handles are facing downwards. Now match up the side seams of the lining with the outer. You can roll them together to make sure they're matched up and then pin them together at the top. And then work round to the other side and match up those side seams as well. And pin together. Then once you've got it anchored nicely at the side seams, you can pin it together. Give it a little shake just to make sure that the outer sitting inside the lining and do check that those handles haven't flipped upwards at all. You need them to be staying downwards because you've tacked them in place a little bit further down. That will help with this. So you can see the ends of the handles are sticking above the top of the outer and the lining. When you're carrying your bag and you've got a lot in it, if you have the handles right on the edge, then they can just pull out through the fabric fibres. By having that extra half an inch above, it means they're less likely to be pulled out. Make sure that pocket stays facing downwards and doesn't flip upwards, because you don't want to catch any of that in your stitching when you sew the outer to the lining. Now sew it together all the way around the top edge. Once you've done that it will look like this. So pull the outer out of the lining and then press that seam open. If you press it open at this stage it really helps for when you're turning it right sides out later because that seam will then lie on the top edge much more easily. So just rearrange it by turning it from the front, you'll have to turn it on the side a bit round to the back but press the whole thing flat. Now open out all the corners of the outer and the lining to make sure they're flat. Because when I make a bag, I like the lining to stay neatly inside the outer. And with this bag, this is a really easy way of doing it. Fold the lining on top of the outer like this. And line up those folded edges. So you can see that everything is still folded inwards. Flatten it all out and then match up those side edges. And then pin together. You've got eight layers of fabric here, but your pins will go through them. And if not, use a fabric clip. Match up the raw edges exactly and just pin there, just on the bottom section. Because all we're going to do now is sew it together just on the folded section and a little bit beyond, but within the seam allowance. So your seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. So if you do the other side, then you'll be sewing about an eighth of an inch. That means that none of these stitches that you're doing to hold the line to the outer will be seen but it's just enough to hold it together so make sure everything's flat and not creased and then sew that side through the folded bit and just a little bit you can see I've done it just maybe half an inch above and on the other side you can see how I've sewn that seam within the seam allowance and this will hold the lining inside the bag and keep it looking neat. Finishing off now you need to turn your bag right sides out. So find that gap in the lining, put your hand inside it, grab the top corner of the bag and push the whole bag right sides out through the lining. And push out all the corners. Turn your bag right sides out at this stage before we close the turning gap. Just make sure everything's right and that you haven't got any bits sewn wrong or any creases, particularly when you sewed the lining in, just make sure everything looks okay. Once you're happy that everything's all right, you can always turn it wrong sides out again and redo any parts if it's not. You now need to close the turning gap. Because you press the seam 
open on the lining of the base of the bag. That means the edges of this turning gap will already be folded under. So just make sure they're folded under by quarter of an inch because that will match up with the seam. Give them a press if not, just to even them out. Sometimes turning the bag right sides out can disturb them a bit. So press them so they're nice and flat and pinned together. Then to close the cat turning gap, you can either top stitch by machine right close to the edge or you can slip stitch by hand. I've stitched mine by machine. You can see that sits right side inside the lining and that just holds it neatly closed. Now turn the whole bag right sides out. And just push the lining right inside the bag. But because you've sewn the line, bottom of the lining corners to the bottom of the outer corners, it'll stay neatly inside. So the handles now need to be facing upwards to finish off the bag. So you just need to remove that second row of tacking stitches. The first row that you put in to attach the handles will be inside the seam at the top of the bag. But because you've used the longest stitch on your machine, it means that it taking out these tacking stitches is quite easy. And also you won't mark the fabric. So just take them all out and also remove all any of the loose threads that are left from the tacking. You can pin these when you're doing the handles if you prefer, but I always find that if I don't tack them and I pin them, then the pins can get caught on your hands when you're turning the bag inside, right sides and wrong sides out. So that's why I prefer to tack them, even though obviously it takes a little bit longer to undo the tacking stitches. So once that's done and you've removed all the threads, you now need to get that top seam lying right on the edge. But because you pressed it open before you got to this stage, that does mean that getting that seam to lay right on the edge is much easier because pressing the seam open always helps to get the seam to lay on the edge. But place it on your ironing board all the same and roll it between your fingers and then press it all the way along. Do take time here to make sure that the outer and the lining is flat and the seam is right on the edge. It makes the top stitching in the next stage a lot easier because you haven't got to be constantly adjusting it. And also by pressing it, you will get a neater finish. So you can see now how my handles are matching up with my tails. Now top stitch all the way around the top edge. Now this is optional, but you can see here that what I did is I didn't actually top stitch across the top of the tails because I wanted them to have a smooth, clear line so the handles ran into the bodies or the tails or the trunks or the necks. That's up to you, but what I did was I stopped and started either side of the handles just so that they didn't have any stitching through them, but the other stitching meant that the, hat, the outer was held neatly to the lining. So now if you have a look, it's got nice box corners with those little decorative triangles. Inside, you've got a slip pocket for keeping coins or keys. You've got a zip pocket for your precious items. And because of that little trick we did with the lining, the lining is held neatly inside the pocket, inside the bottom of the bag. There's your animal tote finished. <laughs>